Hello game developers and welcome to another episode of our VR tutorial series. In this one we're going to continue where we left off last time and um, where we were sorting out our artwork and our lighting and in this episode we're going to take a look at adding our XR grab interactables for picking up objects. Let's dive right in. So before we get started I just wanted to show you what we're actually going to be making. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Put the VR headset on. And then uh, we're going to be able to pick up our gun. And then when you pull the trigger, it's going to um, just give you a little bit of haptic feedback to indicate that we've done something. And at the moment, there's no visuals to show it in the level, but at least we'll be able to hook up that script and listen for the button press. So let's get started. So I've just jumped back into the free scene that we set up last week. Uh, and this one is one that was made available to everybody. And at the moment, all our artwork is kind of static, and this is just the environment. Um, and now we're actually going to bring in our gun model. Uh, and now this is available via link in the description, so you can go ahead and download that. And then when you do download it, it it'll, it'll, should go straight into a folder called Free Content under Wild West Shooter RFBX. And then when you click on there, you'll see the Gun Free. And it's just like a, a blocky, a basic version of the one that we've got in our high res scene. But we're going to turn this into the gun that we pick up on our barrel. So we're going to drop that into our hierarchy uh, and then we're going to put it into position like so. Now what I tend to normally do is I like to keep my artwork and my code separate. So I've just dragged in my FBX straight into the hierarchy. Now I could go ahead and attach all my scripts to this gun free component, which below it has the gun free mesh and the hammer and the trigger. They're all individual objects. Um, but then if I want to change my artwork and I bring in another gun free later on and replace it, um, there's a, a, a danger there that I'd have to go out ahead and link up all those scripts again. So what I tend to do is to create an empty object and I, I, you call this gun parent to gun parent, call it gun parent like so, and then drag that into the gun free and you'll see it becomes a child and then you can reset the transform which puts that transform dead center of the gun and then drag it back out but it's its own object and then put the gun free in that empty object so now all of our code can sit on this gun parent game object and then if we want to replace our art later on we can go ahead and turn this off and drag in any old object um, that is our artwork so let's set this up so we can actually pick it up in the scene to do that we're going to go to add component we're going to start typing xr grab interactable you see it pops in the list there and this adds um, two components it's going to add in a rigid body and also the XR grab interactable script now at the moment if I was hit play this gun's going to fall straight to the floor and that's because use gravity is checked at the moment I haven't set the colliders up in the scene and that's something we'll cover off in an upcoming lesson so we're going to go ahead and turn off use gravity for a second and um, just so it stays into position and um, just for the sake of the tutorial and if you want, you can just add like a box glider onto here and just leave use gravity um, just so that when we enter play mode, it doesn't fall to the floor. I'm going to just check it off a minute just so it stays where it is. So now let's take a closer look at the XR Grab Interactable. Uh, we've got an interaction manager here, which is all set up already in the scene. Uh, the interaction layer mask is set to everything, so it will interact with everything interactable in our game world. Um, and this is the next part we want to take a look at. This is the colliders. These are the colliders we're going to say will allow the grab interaction to occur. And we're actually going to set those up manually. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on my gun parent, right click and go 3D object cube. And it's going to put it in this big cube in the scene. And that's okay. We're going to scale it down to like 0.1, about 10 centimeters. You can see it makes a much better shape there. And then we're just going to position this and try and, try and get it in a, a good location for our gun handle. And this will be what will allow us to grab the gun. We can go ahead and use the um, rec transform tools and just manipulate this kind of as much as you want to and try and get a, a good shape for that part of the collision. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of close enough so it covers the handle. Uh, and then I'm gonna remove the mesh renderer and the cube mesh filter. We're just left with this 
collider and we can go ahead and hand, call this handle collider and then we can duplicate this one and we'll call this gun body collider we'll go ahead and click on edit collider and then we can manipulate this one so it's the shape of the barrel there we go that's pretty cool so then we've got these two colliders in the scene which are going to kind of act as the objects that we're going to grab and then back on the gun parent where it's got colliders we're going to hit the plus twice because we've got two colliders that are going to enable the interaction i'm going to drag in the handle collider and the gun body collider custom reticule we're not going to be using for this one movement type this is going to affect how the gun moves in the hand uh, and how it collides with other interactable objects in the scene uh, and now at the moment it's set to kinematic and we want to change this to instantaneous and basically by doing this it's going to allow a smoother track of the hand currently anyway in, in the version of the XR interaction toolkit that we're using and um, and it won't collide with any other game objects in the scene once we're holding it and that's okay we don't really need to unless we let go of it and it falls to the floor and in which case it will collide again. We're going to retain the transform of the parent. We're going to track the position, track the rotation, and we can throw on detach. And then moving down, you have the interactable events. So when we put our controller over it and hover over it, it's got all the events for that kind of interaction. And when we grab it, it's got the select uh, and then the activate, which we're going to be actually listening for um, in, our, in our gun script. But for now, this is all we really need to get this set up and working. Let's just test this out before we move on to the next step. I'm going to put my VR headset back on. Trusty Rift. I should probably press play before I put it on. And go. So it should just be hovering in front of us in the scene just here. I've still got my ray interactors on in this scene, and that's okay for a minute. But I could distance grab this if I want to, but I'm just going to reach out and grab it. Back. Thank you. And you can see here that it's actually attached. We've grabbed hold of the gun, but it's actually attached to the center point of the grab interactor. And we need to make a custom transform that's going to be the area where we grab. So a custom transform back at the handle rather than grabbing it in the center, which would be kind of weird. And it goes all floaty for a minute. And that's OK. We're only testing out some of the interaction. Goodbye, gun. Like being on the moon. OK, so let's go ahead and set up that custom transform point so we're going to create an empty transform inside our gun parent and this is going to be the grab location and then we'll go ahead and manipulate this into position where we want the user to be able to grab or at least attach to the hand so let's move it so imagine the center of our hand is going to be about here we need to go a bit more forward than that something like that and this might take a little bit of tweaking um, so don't worry if you have to jump in and out of play mode just to see just to see if things are lining up okay. And then when you think you've got it in the right place, go to the gun parent and drag the grab location into the attra attached transform section on the XR grab interactable script. And give it a play and see how it looks. Yep, so almost. It's, uh, you can see it's changed position there, but we're still a little too far back. So we'll just um, move our transform slightly and let's see if I can do this. I might be able to do this in the editor. So <clears throat> we have to attach front. No, that's not gonna work. And if we move that forward, that's gonna bring our hand the grip point of our hand closer that way. So we want to bring it just back a touch. Let's try there. You can see how this process is a bit trial and error. There we go, that's close enough. Cool, so that's in a good position, it's all tracking nicely uh, and in the right place. So what I'm going to do quickly is on my XR rig, I'm going to change my ray interactors back to the direct interactors. So you can watch along if you like. I'm just going to remove the XR ray interactor line visuals. Let's take that off too. Remove component. So we also don't need the XR ray interactor. We can remove that. I'm just going to add in the XR direct interact and we did all this in the previous video I obviously forgot to save it because I'm a moron so you need a direct interactor and a sphere collider 
don't forget to set it to a trigger and give it a smaller value. Thus the radius will be quite big and you'll be picking up other objects you don't intend to. Remove the line visual, line renderer, and the ray interactor. Add then the direct interactor. And a sphere collider. Over a small radius and set to trigger. And now when we play, we won't have those. We won't be able to do the distance grab, just be able to reach up and pick it with our hand. So that's cool. Now, at the moment, you can see our hand and you can see it doesn't quite line up with the gun. Um, and now this is something which I, breaks the, I think breaks the immersion a little bit, is that if, it, if your hand doesn't conform to the gun correctly, it's going to look strange. Now, at the moment, our hand is visible when we grab stuff, but you can actually control this. For the moment, we're going to hide the controller on select. For both hands, on the left hand controller, which has got the XR controller script on it and your XR direct interactor script, go ahead and check the hide controller on select and the hide controller on select on the right hand. And now when you play and run, you'll notice that when you go and reach the gun and pick it up, it's actually moved, it's removed your hand from the scene uh, and you can go ahead and shoot and it, feels, it still feels like it's in the right place because we've lined it up correctly. Now if you do want to show your hand models, um, there's a couple of ways you could go about it. You could go down the more complex route of, I guess, driving it through physics and custom poses and minute, minute plating into position as you get near to grabbing it. But for such a simple game like this, probably what I would do is just have um, some empty hand models in the gun parent um, that were just turned on when you grab the controller. Um, I'd, I'd, we did that in a previous tutorial and it really works quite well where we had the levers. Um, we're just switching on models depending on what hand we were using. So you can kind of fake that effect a little bit, um, which is going to be a lot, lot quicker if you haven't got like a custom solution in place. So now that we are able to pick up our gun that's in the scene, we are going to want to fire it when we pull the trigger button on our controller. So let's take a look at that now. Let's just think about what we're going to be doing. We're going to be picking up our gun and then we're going to be listening for the controller press, which is going to be the trigger, to then do some event, which is going to be um, shooting the gun. Um, but we also want to do a couple of other things when we do that as well. Like we'll probably want to control an animation. We might want to send some haptic feedback to the controller. Um, and we're going to handle all that from like a gun script. Um, so if you navigate to your scripts folder and then your weapons folder, you can create a script in there. And then go right click, C sharp script, and we're going to just going to simply call this the gun script. And this is a script that can be put on any gun, uh, and then we can tailor it as we need to. So we'll go ahead and drag that onto our gun parent, and then you'll see here this is the one which contains all our scripts, none of the artwork, uh, and you can see it's dropped in here the gun script. And we're going to be listening for the activate event on our XR grab interactable so that we know that the trigger has been pressed on our action based controller. So go ahead and double click the gun script and open it in Visual Studio. So you will be pleased to know this is actually a really easy thing to accomplish in XR Interaction Toolkit. At the top we're going to create a using statement and we want to bring in the Unity Engine XR Interaction Toolkit namespace. So we're going to go ahead and say Unity Engine dot XR dot interaction dot toolkit. Now the first thing we the only variable or thing we're going to be looking for in this particular lesson is the XR grab interactable that's on this gun object. I'm going to go ahead and remove the start and update methods from this class here. And I'm going to create a serialized field and we're going to want to get the XR grab interactable and we'll just call this grab interactable like so actually that should be a big eye grab interactable then we're going to need the on enable method i'm going to say private void on enable as soon as this game object becomes active we want to be adding a listener to our grab interactable 
for the activate event. So we're going to go for our grab interactable. And we're going to want the activated. So as soon as our trigger is pressed in our grab interactable script attached to our um, gun, as soon as that trigger is pulled, it's going to fire the activated event. And we're going to add a listener to this. And we're going to call this trigger pulled. And this trigger pulled, I haven't created this method yet. But you can hover your mouse over and then press control and the full stop. And it's going to bring up a box that says generate method. And then we can go ahead and hit enter. And that, at least that works in Visual Studio. And you see just below that it's created the trigger pulled method for us. And it's also passing a parameter, uh, activate event args, and it's called it arg0. And this arg0 actually passes a lot of information along with it that we can use and leverage in our script to do different things. When you think about what happens when you pull a trigger on a gun, it's going to fire the gun, so it's going to do the ray cast. It also may, may also play a sound, may play a particle animation. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, all we're going to do is send a, a haptic impulse to the controller to make it feel like the gun's being fired. And we can get hold of that controller through the parameter that's been passed to us, which is an activate event args, and it's passing this arg0. So we can use this to figure out what interactors grab this object and then fire the controller associated with that interactor. So we're going to say arg zero dot interactor dot get component. And then we want to get hold of the XR base controller and then your parentheses. And then we want to go send haptic impulse. And then it takes two parameters. It's going to take the intensity of the vibration and it's also going to take the duration. So for the intensity, I'm just going to put 0.5F this for now. And we'll say we want it to go for a quarter of a second or so. And finish it off with a semicolon. And then control S to save. Let's jump back into Unity quickly and test this out. Let's minimize that. And then it's going to compile. And you'll see a, we've got a slot here to drag in our grab interactable. And at the moment, we are not getting the component automatically. So we're going to need to drag in our XR grab interactable to the slot just below. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then let's test it out. Hit play, reach up, pick the gun, and then when we press the, con the trigger button, you should be able to feel that the controller is vibrating every time you press the trigger, giving you that nice haptic feedback. And it'll be here where we're controlling things like the Raycast, uh, any audio that's playing, any animations that need to go off when the trigger's pulled. We can do all that from this gun script. So let's have a look at tidying the script up. So we don't need lines one to three, which is using the system system collections. We can go ahead and remove those. Um, we can use expression bodies to shorten some of this code. So you can put the equals greater than sign straight after the on enable. Copy all of the line here from the grab interactable to the end of it. And then cut and paste at the top and remove the semicolons. And then if we want to be super good, we should probably remove the listener using the on disable, won't hurt. And then we want to go remove listener and save that. And then we can use the same expression body here if we wanted to, to tidy this up. But we may be adding more to this as time goes on, such as controlling different aspects of our gun. So over the coming weeks, this method might grow a little bit to incorporate um, initializing a, like a fire method, uh, play audio method, all those kind of different things. And then when we start adding in new guns, we'll probably convert this to an abstract class uh, and inherit from this gun script, uh, which will then allow us to customize some gun behavior, but still inherit some of the base behavior. So we're going to learn a lot and it's going to be pretty cool. But for today, that's pretty good. We set up our gun. Uh, we've detected when we're pressing a button on the controller which is our trigger, and then which activates this method, the trigger pulls, to say that we've, basically we fire the gun um, and it's sending some haptic feedback. There we go, we covered quite a lot in this episode. So we now know how we can go about creating a grabbable object and also started the foundations of our gun script. In the next episode, we're gonna take a look at the next part of our game, which is gonna be the objects that we shoot, the targets, and how we can code those. I'll see you then.